Welcome back to my Florida Shrimping Academy online shrimping seminar. This is part three. My name is Captain Lee Noga and I write for three regions of Coastal Langer Magazine. I'm based out of Edgewater, Florida. What I want to talk about in this video is dip nets. For some reason, we tend to categorically believe they're all created equal. As long as it's corrosion resistant and has monofilament, that's all I need. And when we go to big box stores, you'll notice they carry uh, fishing landing nets and crab nets and all kinds of things. And some of us think that those are useful as shrimping nets, but they're not. First off, don't ever use a net that is blue or black. The reason mono works the best is it becomes translucent in the water and they cannot see it. They can see the shadows off of dark colored webbing of other net material. So don't buy what people advertise as a shrimp net, especially if it's blue or those kind of colors. What we're looking at here is a standard dip net. This is an older dip net and the reason I say that is because I'm noticing there is thread around this net. Should you buy a net that has thread around the whole circumference of the net, then you're pretty much married to that net builder who you will have to come all the way back to, depending on where you live, just to sew your net on. Even though at the time of purchase, a threaded net looks very beautiful and looks extremely well made, Actually, they look quite impressive, especially if the thread is black. But this is what thread looks like a year or so later. It, it goes slack, it loosens up, it pulls away from the hoop, it fades, it frays, it just doesn't look good. The other thing that's a concern is the length of the bag. If you notice down here, this is material that has been sewn together. That's not such a great thing. It causes a constriction point as that mono ages. What size bag should a net have? Well, let's talk about netting. When you buy a dip net, there are two general sizes, one half inch mesh and three eighths mesh. The smaller one is the standard and 99.9% .9 of people will use that net. As you get sophisticated, and the shrimp gets smaller in tidal water areas, you may want to switch up and go to a half inch mesh net so some of the smaller ones can swim in and swim out. People dip like a shovel. Notice this person dipping. The net was raised towards the sky. If you note at the bottom here, you're going to see dribbles and look at all of that agitation in that water. If you dip one at a time and then do the shake, 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 you're gonna create a lot of dribbles that are going to signal the shrimp in the water via their antennas, there's trouble ahead. So you really wanna reduce the amount of shaking you do. And it's best to dip when you can dip multiples and avoid the one at a time or you're going to be there a long time. This is my net, but before I get into what makes a my net, I want to point out to you this net is on its side. This is how I dip. I call it figurating. I lay my weapon, as I affectionately call my dip net, on its side and I sweep in one direction. I flip the net in my hand and I sweep the other direction. That is known as figure eighting. This way I don't tip the shrimp off that there's trouble ahead and I'll get into that shortly. My sock is roughly probably six to seven foot long. Notice that that bag has not been sewn together. That monofilament when it's new constricts as, it, as you see it elongated that's a good thing because it makes it very difficult for the shrimp to get out or jump out. 
This is one kind of net you see in the stores that is not the one to get. And I'm going to talk about why that is. If you note up in this area here, you'll see a long line of aluminum. Every time you push that down into the water, that bar in that hoop displaces the water and shoves a wave, as I call a tsunami, towards the shrimp. Their antennas pick up the vibration and they start to snap, pop, and dive. Every time you put your dip net, even if it's round, into the water, you actually push water towards them. The best way to do it, let me take you back, is to put it on its side. When you do that, and you sweep side to side, it does not displace as much water, and they won't be alerted. So this is the shovel style you never want. You always want to buy the round dip nets. Typically they come in two sizes, 24 inch, which is what is known as a child's net or a lady's net, and sometimes it's just a smaller net. Dip nets really don't know gender and age. The 30 inch is the maximum allowed by Florida law. These are hand done by local artisans. I surely wouldn't want to bend the metal. A perfect dip net is a dip net that is solid and not hollow tubing, and that you can thread your own 3 8 inch replacement sock on. Normally when you find dip nets that are sewn on, that hoop or round dip net does not lend itself to the standard replacement dip net socks, and you always want to use monofilament dip nets. Bridge nets have come a long way. Marker 69 carries the new nets that are 2015 anodized aluminum. This is a bridge net that's anodized, a bridge net being it's a multiple piece net. In this case, this is an 18 foot bridge net. It may not work on all piers and causeways, depending how high. There are areas that require three sections. If you can find a telescopic lockdown bridge net, they make the best. Sometimes an extendable bridge net helps on those that use offshore boats and have high sides. I prefer the twist lock so I can lock down at any length I want. Marker69.com carries these lockdown bridge nets in the super lightweight anodized aluminum. This is a closer look at the handle and the twist lock. I'm not the best photographer, so I often worry if I've left out some parts. Just like a pool cleaning handle, this is the actual twist lock. Very, very light and easy to maneuver. Getting back to the dip net, notice this was done with cable ties. That's not a good idea. This particular net is what we ship to South Florida or anywhere out of our local area in Edgewater, Florida, simply because there's no carrier that will allow me to ship an eight foot handle. So I take the handle off and I ship just the hoop. Thank goodness the people that receive them are able to find a local piece of aluminum at an aluminum company and go ahead and fit this hoop into their own pipe and bolt it in. Very, very clever people that desire these kind of nets. Some of the features you want, excuse me, that shouldn't have happened, in a net is you want a reinforced bar and you can see the reinforced bar going up the side. If you look at the edges of it right here, you'll be able to tell if it's hollow or solid. It might give you a clue to whether or not this hoop is solid or hollow tubing. If you should find one with cables, that's a real simple fix. Just use Dacron coat and fishing line or dental floss and just do multiple wraps in this area until you've got the support that you need. These secondary braces that are added help with the hyperflexing of the net. When you're dipping and the current has your net, it tends to want to 
fold it and bend it backwards. And these braces help reduce that flexing. And it is all attached to a pipe with one bolt, typically a 7 sixteenths socket, whatever you call it, will fit the bolt. Notice the seam right here. This is about 30 inches and the sock is about 7 foot. Again, I prefer the best and that's at Shoemaker. My nets also have this quick release mechanism with a stainless steel ring inside. Actually, it's a spring. It allows me to pinch it and run it down this 3 16th inch rope so it's not flimsy and difficult when your hands get cold, wet, and tired. A simple compression of this mechanism slides freely down this rope so I can dump the contents in a matter of seconds. Another reason why I like Ed Shoemaker Netting, he finds the best things to solve some of the most nuisance problems. In the old days, they used to use clear plastic tubing and push that onto the net. We realize now that's not such a great idea as it chafes the mono. Here's another look at a net that I'm about to ship down to South Florida. This is my net minus the 8-foot handle. When you buy an 8-foot handle, which is the standard, feel free to cut away what you need. I'm 5 foot 2 and I have a 17 foot boat, center console. I have removed 2 foot off my pole and made it 6 foot. Here is the quick release opening string. This is my 7 foot sock, my 30 inch handle, and again my hoop has Dacron threading in these four places. The sole purpose is to hold on the reinforcement brace. But notice the netting. You always want to buy a dip net that you can see is woven onto the frame here. Because that means, should you want to replace your sock, you can, and you know with confidence it will fit the hoop. Those nets that are sewn on don't always fit the hoop. Keep that in mind when purchasing a dip net. Again, I prefer anodized aluminum. It's half the weight of anything else on the market. Here you can see how happy I am holding a dip net for a picture when it's 90 degrees out. But I'm holding an anodized aluminum blue net. It's half the weight. I couldn't find the one picture I really wanted to show you. I can take this 8 foot handle and 30 inch dip net and I can balance it on one finger. The anodized aluminum being so lightweight helps people that have physical spine problems. It also when you're short like I am at 5'2", it allows me to have more speed and I can move the net and move a lot more water with my handle half the weight. That gives me the advantage. The faster I can swing that hoop, the more shrimp I'll catch. This is the other compelling reason to why I had to lighten my gear, which now has become the industry preference. They run about $70 for 50 sales tax. They're sold at the Oak Hill Flea Market. Because of my several herniations, which I attribute to shrimping, I've gone to the lightest possible aluminum without compromising strength. So sometimes good things happen in bad situations. I may have herniated a couple of discs, but I was able to get into a new dip net that allows me to catch more shrimp faster. So it was worth the surgery. That's it for our dip net seminar. Follow me on the multitude of other videos forthcoming. For all your gear needs, or if you simply want what I use, Marker 69 has the exclusive distribution rights to the lights, frame nets, bridge nets, dip nets. Thank you for watching, 
and I'll see you next video.